you're about to see is a real-life story taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock. Captain Braddock, ready. Working with the racket squad, I've arrested every type of swindler. And I've even had to handcuff ghosts. But I'm getting ahead of my story. I call this particular file heaven for sale. And that's exactly what the swindlers try to sell. An imitation bit of heaven. Contact with the hereafter. One rainy day a short time ago, a middle-aged man came into my office. Captain Braddock. Yes. Oh, want to get rid of these wet things? Thank you. Miserable weather, isn't it? Yes, I... I don't mind the rain. Fact is, I don't mind much of anything lately. You sound as though you're having a little trouble. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Captain, I suspect I've made a fool of myself. <laughs> we all have at one time or another. What's your brand of mistake or mistakes? About a year ago, I gave my daughter Mary a convertible for her birthday. What she really wanted was a diamond necklace that had belonged to her mother. By giving her the car instead of the necklace, I caused her death. A horrible accident. Is there uh, anything you want before I go out, Mr. Blanchard? No, Katie. Well, may, more wood on the fire, maybe? Don't bother. I, I'm going to bed soon, anyway. May I say something? Of course. I can't stand it any longer, seeing you like this, grieving all the time. It's been nearly a year now. I can't help it, Katie. I, I keep blaming myself. If only I hadn't given Mary that car. But it doesn't do any good to reproach yourself. Let's not talk about it, shall we? By the way, this is the third night you've taken off this week. Where have you been going? I hope you'll understand. I have been attending seances. I thought it might be possible to contact Mary at a spiritualist meeting. I've wanted to find some way to console you. Sit down, Katie. You know, I don't take much stock in that kind of thing, Katie, but uh, tell me about it. Well, I didn't believe it myself at first, but now I haven't any doubt. I saw spirits materialized with my own eyes. How much did it cost? They said you could give anything you want for a donation. Most people gave two dollars, so I did too. Just throwing your money away. Oh, no. It was worth it. The medium was marvelous. She put her husband in a trance. They brought spirits into the room. I saw them myself, white and radiant. And they knew some of the people there. Actually talked to them. You're not going to tell me that Mary's spirit was among them? Well, uh, no. But I asked Mr. and Mrs. Carpen if... Who are they? The mediums. I asked them if they could materialize Mary, and they said they would try. They said it would be easier to reach her if you were present. At what price? Oh, they didn't say anything about money. Oh, Mr. Blanchard, why don't you come along and see for yourself if there is anything to it? I'm afraid I'd only be disappointed, Katie. But imagine, Mr. Blanchard, just imagine how wonderful it would be if you could see and talk to Mary's spirit. Very well. Just out of curiosity, I'll take you. Wait till I get my hat. Good evening. Good evening. Well, well, I nice wouldn't miss this for anything in the world. Hello. 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 You'll be with you in a moment. Good Hello. evening. I see you've brought a guest. Yes, this is Mr. Blanchard, my employer. Mr. and Mrs. Carson. Good to have you with us, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. So nice of you to come. I understand you accept donations. I don't want to accept anything on your first visit. Well, it's about time for the meeting. We'll get chairs for you. Come right on in.
since uh, this is your first visit here, perhaps you'd like to see the arrangements. If you don't mind. Step right in, Mr. Blanchard. We want you to satisfy yourself that everything is above board. The spirits that choose to favor us materialize in here. As you can see, no living person can get through this screen. Why, Mr. Blanchard, you appear somewhat skeptical. You're determined that no trickery is going to take you in. But everything so far looks all right, doesn't it? And Mr. and Mrs. Carpin seem like such a sincere, honest couple. Careful, Mr. Blanchard. In spite of yourself, you're beginning to weaken. Not much, to be sure. And yet, you're willing to be sure. It looks all right to me. Thank you. This way, please. Friends, if conditions are right tonight, some of you will see manifestations from the other world. If there are any doubters or skeptics among you, our task will be difficult. I ask you all to concentrate on the memories of your loved ones who have gone beyond. This isn't quite what you expected, is it, Mr. Blanchard? Nothing suspicious so far, is there? But wait. Sleep. Sleep. If that Simois, he get to get you. Tell us. An Egyptian control has taken possession of his body. He speaks in an ancient dialect of which I know only a few words. Can you give us names? Even first names of departed? Yes. Yes. Mm, lies. No. No lie. Yes. No lies. Lies. No. He says yes, but he wants the lights extinguished. Concentrate, friends, concentrate. Think of those dear ones who have gone beyond. Dad, I'm here. This is Grace. Does anyone here know a Grace? Is her father present? Wait a minute. She may mean me. I must warn you. Don't touch her. But I, I can see her. What you see is ectoplasm. It comes from Mr. Carson. To contact that ectoplasm with human hand would mean his death instantly. Grace, do you recognize me? Yes. I've been trying to reach you. I'm glad you did. Grace, what is heaven like? Peaceful, like a lovely garden. I've often wondered what it was like. Father, I have a friend near me. She's trying to get through to someone here. Her name is Mary. My daughter says there's a Mary trying to reach someone. Ask her if it's Mary Blanchard. Yes. That is her name. But she can't get through. She'll keep trying. And now, goodbye, Father. I'm being called back. Goodbye, my dear one. Friends, I regret the contact with the spirit world has been broken. The control has left Mr. Carpen. He is coming out of his trance. I'm going to speak to Mrs. Carpen. 
You'll pardon me, but what prevented my daughter from materializing? I wish I knew. There are cosmic forces that we do not fully understand. Do you think it possible she may appear during another seance? The signs were very encouraging. I hope that you'll join us again. Thank you. Nothing will set my mind at rest until I find out for sure. Good night. Do you think Mr. Blanchard will be convinced? I do. We believe what we want to believe. And when our hearts are heavy, we're ready to accept anything that relieves our pain. In a moment, we'll follow up the case of heaven for sale. And now, let's see what happens when Mr. Blanchard arrives at the place where the seance is to be held. What do you think now, Mr. Blanchard? Amazing, wasn't it? Mary was trying to get through to you. A friendly spirit relayed the message. There was no way for this friendly spirit to know you were in the room. So here you are, back again the following night, wondering if Mary will be able to break the mystic bonds that separate her from you. Look, Mr. Blanchard, look. What do you see? Your heart is pounding. Chills race up and down your spine. Mary. Mary, darling, if it's, if it's really you, give me some word, some sign, so I'll be sure. The accident wasn't your fault. I drove too fast. Is there anything you want, anything I can do for you? Yes, there is something. What is it, darling? Anything you want, anything. Mother's diamond necklace. Are you sure? Can you wear it there? Of course, Dad. Heaven's no different than Earth. Only more beautiful. All right, precious, you shall have it. Thank you, and goodbye. Now you're convinced, Mr. Blanchard. You've been back many times. Oh, they couldn't always contact Mary, but the difficulties made it more convincing. So you've decided to fulfill Mary's one wish. What sad and tender memories it holds. A gift to your wife on your first wedding anniversary. How she loved it. And when she was taken from you, you put it aside for Mary. Your conscience hurts because you didn't give it to Mary on her birthday. You gave her a new car instead. But you have a chance to atone now, Mr. Blanchard. Although in another world, Mary still wants that necklace. Are you ready now, Mr. Blanchard? Yes, Katie. Dad, you're here. I've been waiting. Happy birthday, precious. I'm so glad you came. I brought something for you. Don't try to touch her. You'll break the spirit contact. But how can I give her the necklace? It's in my pocket. I'll release your hand. Hold it out to her. But don't try to touch her. Dad, it's gorgeous. It's the nicest farewell gift you could give me. Farewell. I'm being elevated to a higher plane, out of reach of earthly things. Goodbye, dearest death. Mary, wait. Wait! You're worried, Mr. Blanchard. Mary is gone, and so is the necklace. Suppose it wasn't Mary's spirit after all. Suppose... Get him. Did you call me? Yes. Katie, I've been going over something in my mind. How much did you tell Mr. and Mrs. Carpen about Mary? Why, well, just a little. I don't remember exactly. Did they ask any questions about me? Well, let me think. I, I'm not so sure, but it's possible. Not only possible, but probable. Oh, well, we won't say any more about it. Well, I hope I... I didn't do anything wrong. I... I didn't mean to. No, no. It's just that there's something I don't understand. I... I'm confused, that's all. I went back several times, and Mr. and Mrs. Carpen said they would try their best to materialize her. But the spirit control said it would be impossible. I shouldn't wonder. They got what they wanted from you and were shrewd enough to stop there. 
Are you willing to sign a complaint if I can produce evidence the Carpen outfit is a fraud? You're positive they're crooks? Certain of it, aren't you? Yes, it looks like it, but I must admit I'm still a little mixed up. You'd be surprised how many intelligent people are hoodwinked by these clever fakers. If you'll cooperate, I'll get a search warrant. All right, but then? Tonight we'll attend a seance. You'll take me in as a friend. I'd never go right on in. Well, you're back again. Glad to see you. I brought a friend of mine along, Mr. Braddock. How Glad do you do? Glad to have you with us. Mr. Blanchard has told me how interesting your meetings are. We sometimes get very fortunate results. I'll pay for both of us. Thank you. Of course, you realize these donations are voluntary. Of course. Won't you go in? Thank you. Friends, we will do our best to contact the spirit world tonight. And I hope there will be some manifestation. When Mr. Carpen is in a state of trance, a friendly spirit control has taken possession of his body. This spirit acts as a guide to bring other spirits among us. Your mortal consciousness is slipping away. Sleep. Me. Me, Chief Kuwaku. We are about to begin. An Indian spirit control has taken possession. Once it was an Egyptian. This is Stella. Does anyone here know a Stella? I had a sister named Stella. I'd like to find out if... Come forward. You'll soon know. Was your last name Reynolds? Yes, dear sister. Have you seen Mother? I'm with her all the time. I'll tell Father. It will make him very happy. He's been quite ill lately. He mustn't worry. He'll be well soon. Oh, I'm so grateful. And now I'm being called back. Goodbye, dear. Shall I see you again? D don't go yet. Somebody's been asking for me. I'm Sam. The guide has brought us a Navy man named Sam. Has he any friends or relatives present? I had a buddy in the service named Sam. You wish to speak to him? You bet I do. It's a strong grip you have, Mrs. Carpenter. Don't try to free your hands. Don't try to touch the spirit. If you do, Mr. Carpen will die instantly. You don't say. We wouldn't want anything to happen to Mr. Carpen. Sam, do you know who I am? Why, Skipper, of course. I'm happy you're here. We're all very happy. But what's my name? Your name is... But I always just called you Skipper. You're antagonizing the spirit. He'll disappear if you aren't careful. I'm sorry. Don't go away, Sam. What ship were we on? Sam, don't you remember? It was in the Battle of Leyte Gulf. A destroyer was bombed. You died in my arms. Now I remember. I thought you would. But there's one little hit, Sam. What, Skipper? I was never in the Navy. I was in the Air Force. You're breaking the spell. And you're breaking oh. the law, Mrs. Cullen. Oh. I'm Captain Braddock of the Rocket oh. Squad. Oh, you oh. 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 Right, you turn on the lights over. Oh. Open the door. Thanks, Cody. There we are. Please, don't let anyone leave. I have something important to say to you. The police are persecuting these nice people. If you people will please be patient a few minutes, I'll show you how it was done. Don't you believe him? Friends, the police are just trying to discredit me. 
What about the diamond necklace you tricked Mr. Blanchard into giving to his daughter's ghost? Do you call that legitimate? He had every right to give it to her. Not when it's a conspiracy on your part to commit fraud. Prove it. I intend to. I imagine you've all examined this wire screen. Looks foolproof, doesn't it? But unless I'm mistaken, there's a trap door on the floor through which the spirits materialize. You'll find no trap door there, Mr. Policeman. What happens here is pure psychic phenomena. Carter, come here a minute, will you? Yes, sir. Go outside and see if you can find a basement ventilator. Right. You see, I told you the police were mistaken. <clears throat> hey, Brad, I got him. Come on up. Get up there, you joke. Hello, Mary Stella. Stand over there. Well, if it isn't Sam, how are you, shipmate? Dry up, copper. Your hunch was right, Brad. I squeezed through a vent in the basement and found these two hiding. Good work, Carter. And locks from underneath. Opens and closes by remote control. And I think I know where it leads. Oh, here we are. Well, we know how that works. Let's see what else we have here. In the darkness, the direction from which sounds come is deceptive. And that's how our magic trumpet appeared. It's covered with ordinary phosphorus. Why, the cheap crooks, they had me believing they're Tommy Rock. People who are bereaved are the chief victims of this racket. Let me give you a little demonstration of how it was done. Sergeant Carter, take Mary Stull into the alcove. Lights out, please. A small rheostat controls that light, which brings our friendly spirit into being. She's wearing gauze treated with luminous paint. That's your so-called ectoplasm. Lights, please. And that's how they took you in. Just a minute, Sam. You shouldn't interrupt like that, Sam. I hadn't quite finished. Come over here, young lady. Mr. Blanchard, would you mind joining us? What did you do with the diamond necklace he gave you? Don't answer him, Blanche. Oh, so your name is Blanche, not Grace or Mary or Stella. You understand a serious charge involves you, don't you? If it's any of your business, I hopped it. What did you do with the money? I split it with Mr. and Mrs. Coffin. Shut your mouth, you silly little fool! What's the difference? They've got us, haven't they? My poor child, what got you into a dishonest thing like this? Money, Pop. Just plain hard cash from suckers like you. It's easier than working for a living. Take them away, Carter. Mediums in this case went to prison for fraud along with shipmate Sam and his girlfriend, who liked diamonds. Mr. Blanchard was able to get his necklace back, in which he was more fortunate than other victims. But don't think that this cruel sham could only happen to the other fellow. If you get into the clutches of mediums, it could happen to you. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you.